just going to add some of this. Rosemary. Mm. What's going on, y'all? In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play and set up. Rival restaurants. So let's take this up to the top and I'll show you how to set it up. Then we'll come back over here and I'll show you how to play. So to set the game up, you want to take the tray. You want to set it in the center of the board. Take all the different colored clips. Put them in the respective spots. So the yellow, purple, blue, green, and red. Then you want to take the garbage tokens. Put them in the garbage can. And set them on the garbage space. Shuffle all the action cards. And then place those here in the action area, action cards area. You wanna shuffle all the market ingredients. So you wanna shuffle each deck. So we have the fruit stand, we have Carbtastic, we have the Chop Shop, Dairy King, Mystery Mart, and then here we have Vegetable Land. So you wanna shuffle all of those, put them in their respective spots. So here's the shelf. Then you wanna fill each counter space with one ingredient. So here we have counter three, two and one and you want to do that all the way around the board for each of the markets and then you want to fill from right to left so you'll take the top card and then it'll go all the way down here the next card here and the next card there and you want to take the money tokens place them in reach of all players next to the board so we have the three hundred dollar tokens and then we have the one hundred dollar tokens here you want to separate the gourmet and basic recipes. You want to shuffle those. Then we'll put those next to the board as well. Then you're going to deal a random restaurant to each player. Now you can deal more than one if you like, but there has to be an equal amount of restaurants for players to choose from. So you can deal two to each player or three and then let them choose their own. And then you want to take the popularity point slider one of these here. You want to just place it at the zero mark right here on your restaurant. That is showing what popularity you're currently at. And of course, the beginning of the game, everybody starts at zero. Each player will get a movement wheel. Shows them which area on the board you want to get to. And I'll talk about that more in a minute. Each player gets a cost guide. So here it shows just the cost of everything. Each player gets one of those. Then each player draws an action card. So we have each player with their own action cards. Then you randomly deal one gourmet and one basic recipe to each player. So we have the basic recipe here for Antoine Baguette, basic here, gourmet here, kimchi, gourmet here, basic here. And then we have pork knuckles, tiramisu, Chi Thai Fruit Cocktail, Gourmet here, Basic here. You'll also deal one ingredient from each market to each player, except the Mystery Mart. So we have Vegetable Land, Fruit Stand, Carbtastic, Chop Shop, and Dairy King, and each player will get one ingredient from each market, but it comes from the shelf as to be randomized. Now if the ingredient is in that recipe, so here we have the Margarita Pizza, it calls for flour, cheese, tomato, and leafy greens. So of the ingredients that you got, if any of them are in that recipe, you're going to place them next to or beneath your recipe card as to let players know how close you are to completing that recipe. So here we have flour, cheese, tomato, and leafy greens. We put the cheese here. And then this has noodles, butter, milk, shellfish, and garlic. As you see, we have none of those ingredients here, so they go underneath our restaurant. And then here we did the same as well as here. I did not place these underneath my restaurant as that would be out of view, but these are my ingredients here. Then you will randomly deal a chef card to each player, or you can deal more than one as long as each player has an equal number to choose from. So you can deal them two or three, and then they will choose one that they'd like to keep. 
So I chose pork knuckles. And then they also get, of course, the character stand that goes with that character and it'll go on top of your restaurant. Then you wanna let everybody know your chef's name and their special power, kind of introducing your chef to the other restauranters. So a game is going to be divided into three phases, all happening in one day. First phase is money and move. So you're going to collect $300 from the bank. You're going to decide on your movement wheel whether you'd like to go to a market or the island, which is here. And then once everybody is ready, you will all move to your destinations. Then there's going to be buy and barter, where at your destinations, you're going to buy all the ingredients that you wish, upgrades, take out the trash, sell chocolate, any or all of the above. And then the final phase is going to be cook and counter, where you're going to cook anything that you're able to, and then you're going to restock the counters as well as discard any spoiled product. And we'll get to that a little bit later. Before the game begins, you wanna designate a head chef. What they're gonna be doing is basically moving the game along smoothly and making sure people have the right ingredients for the recipes, stopping the timer when an action card wants to be resolved, and also making sure everybody is ready to move on to the next phase. Now the first phase we have is money and move. You're going to take $300 from the bank. And then you're going to use your movement wheel and decide where you want to go to. Now you can only go to one market per day or the island. You can't do multiple, so make sure you choose wisely. So you will take this, and let's say I wanna to go to the fruit stand. So you would place it like that, right between here, and then you're going to take the movement wheel, place it face down, letting the head chef know that you're ready to move. Then once everybody has placed their movement wheels face down, you will flip them over all at the same time. And you will go to that location. So Antoine Baguette and Kimchi both want to go to fruit stand. But as soon as you flip over your movement wheel, you want to make sure you put it on the ingredient that you want the most. So let's say Antoine Baguette wants the beans here at the fruit stand. And let's say Kimchi wants the tomato at the fruit stand. They would both place their characters on the item they want most. And then we have Pork Knuckles. He is at the vegetable land and he wants the garlic. Now, if you did not choose a market and you chose the island, instead of going to the market, you would go here to the island where you can buy action cards, you can purchase restaurant upgrades, as well as take out the trash. Now, if you have a chef power that works during money and move, you can use it now. And then also typically money and move is not a timed event or phase, but if players are too, taking too long, you can set a minute or so timer. So that way, you know, get the game going. Now in this phase also, you can talk with other chefs, maybe trying to work out deals and whatnot, but you cannot trade or sell anything until buy and barter. And we're coming to that phase next. Now in the next phase, buy and barter, you're going to have one minute and you can buy as much as you like only from the location you're in. So Pork Knuckles is at the island. He can buy whatever upgrades he wants, as many action cards, take out as much trash as he needs to, as long as he has the money to do so. Now for Kimchi and Antoine Baguette, they can only buy from the fruit stand. So they can only buy what's on the counters or from the shelf. And then from the fruit stand, each ingredient is $100. So you can buy the avocado, and then if you don't need tomato or beans, you can take a risk, and then you can buy from the top of the fruit stand deck for $100. Now in bartering with other chefs, you can trade pretty much anything. You can give them money, ingredients, recipes, action cards. You can give them garbage. You can trade favors. But a few things to keep in mind are that at all times, all chefs must have one basic and one gourmet recipe. And then each chef can have a max of one of each upgrade. So like even though Pork Knuckles is over here at the island, he can't buy you know, four of the basic recipe books or two gourmet recipe books. No, he can only buy one of each upgrade. 
Now say Antoine Baguette is over here at the fruit stand and he says, hey, pork knuckles, get me, get me a basic recipe book also. Now he can pick that up, but he can only have one for himself. So he can pick that up and then later he can give it to him or they can trade. However that works, he can ask him for more money. It's, you know, it's worth $200, but since I'm doing you the favor, I want $300. Now once the timer runs out, so we have the one minute timer here, or there's also an app you can download. So once the timer runs out, the head chef will tell everybody to stop, and then you're going to move your chef back to your restaurant. Now if you already paid for a transaction or agreed on a trade before time was called, you can finish it up. So say, you know, Antoine Baguette and Pork Knuckles were still discussing whether or not Antoine Baguette wanted to pay that extra $100, but kimchi was done, so she would go back to her island or her restaurant, then they would just continue their bartering and trading. Now the next phase is cook and counter. So if you have the ingredients for a recipe, you may cook it. You're just going to announce what you're going to cook and then have another chef that's nearest to you or the head chef verify the ingredients. For example, if Pork Knuckles wants to cook tiramisu, he's gonna need bread, butter, cheese, egg, milk, and chocolate. And then if you see here, he has the bread, butter, cheese, egg, milk, and chocolate. He can go ahead and cook the tiramisu. So he's going to say that recipe is cooked. He's gonna take all his ingredients, discard them into their appropriate areas in the tray. So we have the stickers where they should go. And you'll discard it face up. So we discard the dairy. Then we have Carbtastic here. And you're going to discard the chocolate into the mystery mark. Now you can only cook one recipe per day unless you have the double cooktop, the double cooktop, which is $300 and you can buy that from the island. So after you've finished cooking your recipe, you're going to do the following things in this order. You're going to look at the bottom right corner of your recipe and it shows how much garbage you have to take for that recipe. So this one, the tiramisu, you need to take two garbage. So we would take two garbage, we'd place that on our restaurant, we would flip this recipe card over, stating that it is done. You'll grab another of the same recipe card, so this was a gourmet, so we'll grab another gourmet recipe card, and we'll just place it right on top of that finished gourmet recipe card. Now if at any time during drawing recipe cards, if the decks run out, you're going to just take the recipe, the discarded recipes from each chef, create the deck again, and then just reshuffle it. Now, chefs cannot give up recipes if they just don't like them. You have to do them, or you can barter and trade them with somebody else, but only during buy and barter. After cooking your recipe, gaining garbage, and selecting a new recipe, you're gonna use whatever popularity bonuses you have. So on your restaurant, you get bonuses after reaching levels three, seven, and 12. Now, some of these bonuses happen immediately and they cannot be saved for later, but some of them are from now on. So for Pork Knuckles restaurant, Lunchador Picante, he has rising dough at number three, discard two garbage or take $300. So that happens immediately. So once he gets to level three, he can e either discard two garbage, so he can literally discard the garbage he just got, the popularity bonuses happen after the fact. He can also, and then at level seven, he has hot sauce. From now on, take one less garbage for each recipe you cook, including from today. So if he had gotten to level seven today, he would have taken one less garbage than he took with this recipe already. Then at level 12, he has the big cheese. From now on, you can discard garbage for $200 each without being at the island. So that is a good deal, except for the con of if you're at the island, it's only $100 to discard garbage, but it's still pretty good. And then it says during buy and barter only. So we can, if we look at this restaurant, Lunchador Picante, and here are the popularity levels. So we have level three, which is the rising dough. Level seven is hot sauce. And then right here we have number 12, the big cheese. If you are to master a recipe that matches the type of cuisine your restaurant serves, you get plus one popularity. So for example, if pork knuckles at the 
Lunchador Picante were to master carne asada burrito. It's a Mexican dish. He serves Mexican dishes, so he gets a plus one popularity. So instead of five, you would get six. After everybody has a chance to cook whatever they're able to, you will restock the counters as well as discard anything that has basically gone out of date. Let me explain what that means. So on the restocking, you're going to move everything. So if there's an empty space, you're going to move everything down basically. And then you're going to refill the leftmost counter space. Now on things that are still full, you're going to discard the rightmost ingredient saying basically it's spoiled because it wasn't used. You're going to discard the rightmost ingredient and then everything again will move down to the right and then you'll refill the counter there. Let me go and explain the action cards, what they do, what they don't do, how to get them, and what's the most powerful one. So let's start off with the way you get an action card first is of course you're gonna start, everybody is gonna start the game with one action card. And then the way you get more is you have to go to the island and purchase each action card for $300. Now, when you purchase them, they can be used immediately you can also, you can only use one action per day. Action cards take priority over the chef powers, and then they can also be used to override other action cards. Now, when you wanna use an action card, you're going to declare that you wanna use an action card, and then the head chef is going to stop the timer. Whichever phase you're in, he's gonna stop the timer. And if you're not in a timed phase, well, you'll just announce it and the head chef will pause the game. So basically, say I want to use dinner and a show. I'm going to announce that. I'm going to say I'm going to use dinner and a show. And then the head chef is going to pause the game. And they're going to look at the card. And then the effects will take place. So let me explain the most powerful action card, which is Clamvoyance. This Clamvoyance action card can be used to stop any action card or chef power used against you. Protects only you can also be used to negate another clamvoyance, and it does not count towards the one action card per day limit. So say somebody was using their chef power on you. Let's say Antoine Baguette was using his chef power on you. All chefs in the same location as Antoine must pay $100 more for each thing they buy does not work at the mystery mark. So if Antoine and Pork Knuckles were at the same location, all chefs in the same location as Antoine must pay $100 more. So according to his special ability, each ingredient at the fruit stand would be $100 more. So it would be $200. But Pork Knuckles has clamvoyance and he says, well, you know what? I'm going to use my clamvoyance and now everything is back to $100. And then Antoine Baguette says, you know what? I also have a clamvoyance. So I'm going to negate your clamvoyance. So my chef power works and you have to pay $200 per ingredient, my friend. Here is the clamvoyance. That's what it looks like. Let's go ahead and go over the restaurant upgrades. So we have basic recipe book. After cooking, you can draw four basic recipes, choose one and discard the others. So instead of drawing one basic recipe to replace your other basic recipe, you can draw four and then choose one to keep and discard the others. Now with the gourmet recipe book, after cooking, draw four gourmet recipes, choose one and discard the others. So the same as the basic recipe book, you can draw four gourmet recipes, choose one and discard the other whenever you need to replace your gourmet recipes. Then we have the double cooktop, allows you to cook both of your recipes simultaneously. So if you had all the ingredients for your basic and your gourmet recipe, you can cook them both simultaneously if you have the double cooktop. Normally you can only cook one recipe a day. So that's a pretty good upgrade. We have social media advertising, increases daily income by $100. So the normal daily income is $300, but with the social media advertising, it increases your daily income by $100. So therefore you would get $400 instead of the normal $300. Then we have Celebrity endorsement increases daily income by $100. So again, that increases your daily income by $100. So normally you would get 300 with the celebrity, you would get 
400. Now, if you have both the social media advertising and the celebrity endorsement, you would get $500 a day instead of the normal $300. Let me explain garbage <laughs> just a little bit more in detail. Oh yeah, that's stuff you throw out, right? Well, yeah, but there's special things that happen with garbage in rival restaurants. Now, if you complete a recipe and you still have garbage in your restaurant, that recipe is going to be worth less depending on how much garbage you have in your restaurant. So let's say the tonkatsu ramen. You completed this and it is worth five popularity. Now, if you have garbage in your restaurant, so right now I have two garbage, it is going to be worth three instead of five. So that's how the garbage works if you let it pile up in your restaurant. So take out the trash, y'all. Now, if you remember I said during Money and Move that you have to put your character on top of the item that you want most. Now, if two characters land on the same item, now let's say Antoine Baguette and Kimchi both wanted peppers, then a bidding war commences. Now, what happens is you're going to basically try and outbid each other for the ingredient that you want. Now, all bids start at the market price. So for the fruit stand, it would be $100 and you have to increase bids by $100 increments. Now, if the bidding war ends in a tie and time runs out, then none of the chefs may buy that ingredient that day. However, if the interested chefs have the same amount of money and bid all of it, they may draw garbage as a tiebreaker. So for example, Antoine Baguette and Kimchi were in a bidding war for the peppers. So say Antoine Baguette says, all right, I'm gonna bid $400 for the peppers. Then Kimchi says, well, I'm gonna also bid $400 for the peppers. Now, either of them can take as much garbage as they want to break the tie. So say Antoine Baguette says, all right, well, I'm gonna take a garbage as well as $400. And Kimchi also says, well, I'm gonna take a garbage and still pay $400. Antoine Baguette says, well, I'll, I really want these peppers. So I'm gonna take three more garbage. And then Kimchi says, well, you know, that's a lot of garbage. I'm not trying to have that much waste in my restaurant. You win. And that is how you win a bidding war by using garbage as a tiebreaker. Let me go ahead and explain the mystery mart and the ingredients in the mystery mart where all the fun stuff happens. So first we have chocolate, we have alien goo, we have secret sauce, we have wine, and then we have tofu. Now chocolate, you can of course use it in your recipes or you can sell it at the island for $500, but you must be at the island. So if you bought the chocolate from the mystery mart for $300, you can sell it for $500, so you make a profit of $200. Now we have alien goo. Use this in place of any ingredient in your recipe when you cook. So this happens at the time of cooking and not before. So say you're short noodles and you say, okay, well, I'm gonna use this alien goo in place of noodles. Now the alien goo cannot be used as a secret sauce because secret sauce is not a required ingredient in any recipe. Let me explain what secret sauce is. What secret sauce is, you can add this to any basic recipe and earn one extra popularity when you cook with it, max one per recipe. And that's what secret sauce does. Wine, add this to any gourmet recipe and earn one extra popularity when you cook with it, max one per recipe. So the secret sauce is only for basic recipes and the wine is only for gourmet recipes. Then we have tofu. Tofu is a meat substitute. When cooking, draw one less garbage when you replace meat with tofu. You can, also, you can also use tofu as a substitute for any chop shop ingredient in your recipe, but you must use tofu to replace a meat in order to get the garbage discount. If tofu is already required ingredient, then you do not get the garbage discount. So basically if you have, so like the Nacho Supreme right here, it says you need flour, cheese, beef, avocado, beans, and peppers. Now, if you use the tofu to replace the beef, you would get one less garbage after making the recipe. So Nacho Supreme, you would get five garbage regularly, but if you replace that beef with tofu, you would get four garbage. 
you will continue doing the three phases of money and move, buy and barter, and cook and counter until one of the restaurants has reached 20 popularity points and has become the wiener. If you enjoyed watching this video and you want to learn how to cook more board games, if you enjoy watching this video and you want to learn how to play more board games, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. I'll be posting more videos every week. Thanks for watching. The other board gamer.